Um, we are very happy to be here. Um, so yeah, my name is Jules. I'm a design advocate at Zero Height. And uh, for those who still don't know what Zero, Zero Height is, it's a design system documentation platform that help uh, mainly designers and developers to document the design system and to you know, help them uh, building better design systems. Uh, but you already had a talk uh, about design system, and I'm not going to talk about design system today. I'm more going to talk about design in general, uh, with a special uh, focus on colors today, uh, and how you know we can use colors uh, in design, and uh, how you know uh, colors are important uh, for your design. And at first, uh, I think you know it seems obvious or easy to. Uh, talk about what color represents and what are their meaning and how you can use uh, the message behind the color. Uh, basically, what is you know, the color symbolism uh, and how you can use it in your design. Uh, and it's very tempting you know, to, 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 talk about, to talk about that, but I'm not going to talk about color symbolism. And uh, if I'm being very honest, I think that color symbolism is a bit of bullshit, actually. <laughs> Uh, and there are actually multiple reasons to, uh, for that. Um, and the main reason, actually, is because color is an ID. Color is very cultural in the end. And uh, you can't really say that uh, this color represents something uh, because it's just uh, what you decided this color should represent. And uh, even if uh, you think that uh, color uh, is very popular and means uh, uh, has a specific message for you, uh, it doesn't mean that it's the same and it's shared and universal for everyone. For example, let's take the red. And I think, you know, it could be obvious for a lot of people that, uh, uh, especially in Occident, uh, that the red is a very powerful, you know, color and that is uh, invigorating and exciting. Um, but if you have a look at the other side of the planet, let's say in Japan, for example, uh, people would tell you that the red is more like a, peak, a calm and peaceful color for, uh, to them. So, starting from this point, it's very difficult, you know, to establish like um, a shared knowledge or values and principle about what the colors should uh, say and address uh, as message for your brand or for your design. There's also another reason uh, about why it's maybe not the right thing to rely on colors. It's that we are not e uh, equal when seeing colors, and I'm sure that. You all had this huge debate about uh, the color of this dress, and I'm very happy and curious to have this debate again. So who sees this dress as blue and, uh, and black? OK. And who sees as gold and white? OK, yeah, you can clearly see that we don't see all the same colors. And it's very weird, but uh, I think uh, this uh, example is great to remind us, or maybe to uh, to, 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 as a, as a, to teach to some people uh, that we don't have the same eye, the same sight, and based on our experience and culture and background, we don't see the world the same way. And we don't see the colors the same ways too. So you might see a specific color right now, but the, the person sitting next to us won't see the exact same color as you. So just to say that colors don't mean anything. But we still need colors to design, right? We still need to use colors to help our users to uh, do actions. And colors might be, you know, you know, color symbolism might be, you know, a bit of bullshit, but it doesn't mean that we can't guide our users uh, using colors. And when it comes, you know, to uh, guiding our users, I, I think it's very interesting to focus on two main colors uh, that to me seems very obvious and universal uh, when it comes to, um, uh, to, 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 to make actions and to guide our users. Uh, it's the red and the green. Uh, even if, I don't know, you're asking your grandma to use an interface, or anyone who's not familiar uh, with a digital interface, it seems quite obvious that if you're you know, using the red button, it's going to be a destructive action. And if you're using the green uh, button, it's going to be a positive action. And, uh, it's always something that I was curious about to know to learn more about how it was possible, you know, to have uh, a meaning that is so powerful for for, this, for those colors. Uh, and the thing is, it's not just in interface. When you when we think about it, it's something that is uh, beyond the interfaces. 
Uh, and even if we go outside our, of, of our screens, we can see you know, the same logical, uh, especially with, with uh, traffic lights. You know? uh, I think everywhere and for everyone, it's obvious that when you see the red traffic light, you need to stop, and when it's green, you can go. So I was wondering, Maybe I'm wrong, actually, and maybe I should focus on color symbolism, and maybe I should you know, pay more attention about what the red and the green means for everybody, because maybe there is some truth we can have about uh, the, the meaning of this color and how we can, and how we can use uh, this meaning and this symbolism uh, for design and um, our project. No, it's still bullshit, actually. <laughs> um, but there's, uh, actually, if we go back to, to this image, uh, you may have actually some uh, um, a bit of an answer. There are two things, two hints or elements uh, that can explain why we picked red and greens for traffic lights and after in, uh, in our interfaces. The first thing is it's dark, it's the night, and it's foggy. So the reasons are more about visibility and ensuring that those colors can be you know, seen very, so very far and uh, in a very specific context. So it's not so much about symbolism, it's more about science in the end. And if we have a focus about how colors uh, work with our eyes from a scientific point of view, uh, we can observe that uh, on the wavelengths of the colors, uh, there is uh, the red and the green who are the most powerful and the most impactful colors uh, for, for our eyes the way we are seeing them especially the red, actually, uh, which actually makes sense that we are using the red for the traffic light uh, to, to, to make a stop, because um, it has real physical reaction uh, about how um, we react when we see red. Uh, it, uh, first, it appears closer to us. Um, uh, it's, it's something really physical. And then it can also accelerate uh, your heart rate. And it's the perfect color in the end to catch your attention which makes sense that we picked the red to, for the traffic light and we pick the red now you know, to uh, uh, display some very important information or to alert uh, our users uh, on specific message or danger in critical cases. When it comes to the green, well, uh, it's the same logical, very powerful um, uh, color in the, in, the, in the wavelengths. And as it is the opposite of the red, it was you know, obvious to, to pick this color uh, to, to have the opposite message. OK, but what about the brands who are using red and green? Uh, does it mean that all the red brands are negative and all the green brands are positive? Of course, it's a bit more complicated than that. And um, you know, the reasons why a, re uh, a brand is picking some specific colors uh, are not so much about symbolism, but it's also about uh, the target and the strategy and the vision. And in the end, it's all about the storytelling that the brand wants to provide to, um, to, 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 to their identity. But what I'm really curious about um, uh, with this, those brands using uh, those colors is how you, know, you can use, especially with the red, uh, your uh, brand color uh, uh, in your interface. And how, if you really want you know, to use the red uh, as your main and primary color, how it can be sometimes very tricky uh, to make your brand living with your danger in critical cases, uh, and how you can ensure that your user won't you know, get confused with your brand elements and when there is a critical message to, to, to read. And that's where you know, it's more like food for thought, but I'm wondering if maybe we should you know, uh, think differently about the way we are uh, doing the, and designing uh, the error messages and uh, the, um, the critical messages. I'm wondering if red is still the right use uh, for, for this, and if uh, color symbolism is bullshit. Uh, what if we could maybe sync uh, the, uh, the, the use of red, uh, the, the error case differently uh, without using red? Very slowly, uh, to introduce this topic. I think you know, Muji is doing something interesting because they just don't rely on the red to indicate errors, but they also you know, using shapes, especially with uh, the dots, uh, the, the dashed uh, outline to indicate errors. Uh, and it's not so much about not relying just on the red to indicate errors. It's, 
in this case also a very good best practice for uh, accessibility reasons. But I think we can go uh, beyond uh, than just you know, playing with something other than the red and uh, or shapes and things like that. I think maybe we can get rid, get, get rid of, of, the, of the red color. Uniqlo, who is also you know, a red brand, uh, I think it's interesting that the fact that they kept you know, the red branding on their design elements, such as the button and the actions, uh, and they made this choice to display the arrows in, in a different color. And it might not be the perfect uh, example here, but I, I really like this idea of using something, a, a different color for error because especially when it comes to uh, forms, you know, it's painful enough you know, to fit a form. So, I mean, come on, we are not doing on purpose a mistake on the form, so please don't attack us with a red message alert to tell us that we've been wrong. I think maybe there are other ways you know, to, to tell us that uh, you, you could do, uh, uh, you, you have made a mistake and uh, it, it could involve something different than, than the red. So I think it's a good first step uh, for, for, for this. But I think we can go even, you know, uh, we can maybe even be better about the way we are thinking the, 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 the critical messages uh, for our users. And I like how Dropbox actually is uh, uh, rethinking uh, the whole uh, critical uh, experience uh, because uh, they are, um, mainly using interstitial messages uh, to double check with their users uh, the actions they are doing and to ensure that uh, it's the, the actions that they, they want to do. And uh, they don't rely at all on the red uh, and they even actually play with their main color, which is uh, the blue, uh, to uh, express you know, a very uh, destructive information, which makes me wonder uh, what would have happened if Dropbox was actually a green brand? Would have would have been possible to look like this? I don't know. Um, my point is, it's not just about saying that if we should maybe leave the red color alone. Uh, it's more like a global uh, thinking about how we could, you know, think about the colors in our designs and the purpose and the meaning of these colors. Uh, it's, it's more like, you know, as I said, food for thought and uh, an, open, an open ID. Uh, and if you're still not very convinced about, um, about uh, color symbolism being bullshit, uh, I really strongly invite you, you know, to read uh, Michel Pastoreau's work, who is a brilliant author uh, who wrote a lot of stuff about uh, histories of colors. And it's fascinating, first, just for, to understand the history of colors uh, from Middle Age to today, uh, because it's, yeah, you, you can learn a lot of stuff about uh, how colors were very popular at some point and then hated uh, in a different time, uh, how colors are influenced by technologies, uh, by um, uh, religion, politics, industries, a lot of things. But at the end, uh, what you can uh, remember is that you can't rely on color because it's always evolving, it's always changing, uh, and, um, and definitely, you know, colors are just an ID, and color is just a cultural thing. Uh, and, uh, and that's probably, yeah, all you need to know. Thank you.